So I'm really excited to bring on right now, well, you're already here. <laughs> I'm so used to saying that, bring on. Um, Sam Kessler, a reporter at Coindesk. D uh, give it up for Sam. Matt Lysing co-founded uh, Decentral Media in 2021 and was pre previously with Bloomberg News where he covered market structure and crypto. Give it up for Matt. And of course, Allison McCauley, Chief Advocacy and Engagement Officer at Unfinished. Well, let's get into this combo. It's, we, we don't have a lot, uh, a lot of time. We know they'll kick the media off much more quickly than <laughs> they'll kick the techies off, right? The developers. Okay, so I guess how has coverage changed for each of you between Web 2 and Web 3 from your stance, Allison? So I think what's really interesting is that if you look at what these technologies do, so Web2 was obviously super Silicon Valley focused, right? All the innovation was coming out of a specific place. Um, the way the infrastructure was built and the applications on top of it, all of this was um, obviously centralized. And what's really interesting now is that you have communities that are involved in the building, communities that are involved in this in new ways, and so, um, it's it's a little bit chaotic. It's a little bit hard to track. Yeah. And the other piece is that it also is so, um, you know, we've got 30 years of experience now with the web under our belts. So our ability to project and understand how we're gonna use these new, these new technologies is so vast and so rich. So more people are getting involved and it makes it pretty chaotic to understand how to navigate through it. So it's extremely complex, difficult to navigate through. Um, but yeah, you're here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. What about you, Sam? Yeah, so I come at this, I think, from a pretty um, unique or weird angle where I've only been reporting on crypto for about the past six months. Before this, um, I was actually doing product at Google. I studied CS. I was probably like most of the people in this audience. Honestly, um, obviously, it was more Web 2 than Web 3. But I think something that I noticed, um, so I graduated from college in 2019. And over the course of my time in college, I did notice that perception around tech, as we've all probably experienced, has changed. Mm -hmm. It definitely soured um, in a certain way, even between the time I accepted my offer to work in a big tech company and the time that I started working at that big tech company. There was like a two year period, I think, between 2017 and 2019, when things really started to kind of decline in the eyes of the public in terms of their public perception of these companies. And I yeah. think crypto has experienced a big piece of that recently. Okay, and I want to get into like how how do you I guess tell us the stories of the media because like you're obviously excited about that it even question. though yeah, yeah exactly uh, what about you Matt so uh, at Bloomberg I started my career there in 2004 and I was covering Wall Street for years and you had to build up sources you had to like get to know people you had to take people out for drinks you had to like get information from them to try to get a scoop because that's really how you kind of made a name for yourself so that's what I I was used to that uh, and then. When I started covering crypto in 2015, it was so different. Like founders were just putting out like what they were doing on Twitter. Um, there yeah. would be like a group of three people who knew what was going on, and it was impossible to get to them. So, I, I don't. It's really hard to get a scoop in crypto for that reason. I think uh, it, 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 to this day, and it moves so fast that um, mm. it really is. Uh, I think people do take to heart this kind of transparency and this sort of like distributed, you know, like ethos and. They're just like, I want you to hear it from me. I'm not going to go to a reporter. So I, I found that um, to be quite striking. But that's still, there's, uh, there's an importance of your perspective and being still like uh, published somewhere, right? So do you think you still have to schmooze with them? I feel like the, the schmoozing sometimes does help still, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think being at Bloomberg definitely got me in the door at a lot of yeah. places. Um, but then now I'm not there anymore. But I, I sort of have those contacts who have you know, come with me, so to speak. But, you know, it's also, it's not easy to understand a lot of this stuff. It takes a lot of work to kind of know what you're talking about. And then it's really important to know how it works so that you can know when somebody's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And so there is that legitimacy, I think, that comes with it or from being a good reporter who, you know, you can, you, you can balance a story out with like, hey, these guys are really excited about their project, but, yeah. you know, it's tough. And here are some other things that have blown up that have been just like this. So 
I, I find that context very uh, key. Definitely. Uh, I want to know from each of your perspective where you're at right now, how you are covering the space and like looking to, to put that information out there, Allison, at Unfinished. Yeah, so I think my focus really is educating in space and helping people to understand. And so uh, what I have a lot of concern about is the fact that we have in front of us possibly one of the largest digital transformations ever. When you think about the potential to shift power that's in this technology, and you think about its ability to galvanize community in new ways, it's extremely powerful, but so few people understand it because uh, it is so complex, because it takes such a hands-on experience to be able to even start to understand how it works. And so I think we're about to um, experience an incredible, um, stark digital, new kind of digital divide, where there's the insiders who get it, who are starting to take advantage of these new technologies and use them and leverage them, and those who don't understand. So I do a lot of talks with people who are brand new to the space, and it's incredibly shocking to me still. I did a talk uh, recently with 300 executives and in the audience, there were uh, three people who had actually were so curious early on, they were Bitcoin miners. That was a little atypical. But then I also had people who, were, before that I talked, were coming up to me and saying, hey, look, it, how, what's the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain? That's still happening. <laughs> so I'm really concerned about that. So my focus is really trying to educate beyond the um, the you know, exciting, you know, exciting headlines and, and things that, that are all very easy to, you know, captivate us and, and, and um, write a story around because it's, it's very, um, there's a lot of interesting headlines, a lot of interesting news. Yep. I'm trying to focus on what are the fundamentals of change that are underlying this and help people understand it. It's a lot. What about you, Sam? Like, how are you approaching reporting the space right now? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. I, I, I think... Um, schmoozing looks a lot different in crypto than I imagine um, it does in other industries or it even would have just a couple of years ago. Um, my life is spent in Discord, on Twitter DMs, in not Twitter DMs, just on Twitter. Um, it, it's, it's wild out there, but I think one of the things that's helped me as um, a, a reporter starting out in this space has just I, been the fact that I have a, a tech background. Yeah, and I think helps. that there's this perception among builders in the space that a lot of people in media just don't understand it like Allison was talking about. And that's true. Like a lot of people truly don't understand it. So I've found, I by no means know as much um, about specific technologies as probably most of the builders in this room. It gets pretty niche depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. But I've gotten stories shared with me exclusively because people understand that I'll try my best to actually cover it with a full understanding compared to another outlet, which will conflate yeah. you know, Bitcoin, it, Ethereum, and whatever else. Yeah, it's almost like you need a partner with like more of that life, like, you know, a me to like be like, and together we like, like, cause I cover it more from how are we actually like using these technologies, the cultural perspective. But like, I do talk to technologists and I like, I wish I was more like them, but it's hard. And then I need to go to my tech friends and be like, can you just break that down for me? What I just heard to try to explain that. So I totally get that, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, what about you? Um, so what we're doing at Decentral is really focusing on the people and trying to make them like full-fledged human beings. And I think telling their stories, their backstories, uh, what they did before they were in crypto, how they came into it. Um, because I think t like when you show somebody a good character and, and an interesting person, then you can bring them along, you can bring a reader along to what they're doing and it's easier to explain. Yeah. And the other part is, I really want to write about the culture because this is a new culture. And yeah. I think uh, what we say is, you know, this is like being here in San Francisco in 1969. You might not have known what was going on, but you knew something was going on. And so that's a huge part of what we're trying to do. And just to, you know, humanize it so that it's not so scary and that you can then bring more people in and just sort of like, you know, plus, I think a lot of mainstream disdain for crypto uh, really pisses me off. And I think it, it totally um, kind of, it, it, it's a negative for the people who are making all this stuff. And it, it kind of like, it, it's a disservice to them. And I, I mean, coming from Wall Street to the, the group of people I cover now, 
The folks in crypto and Web3 are like the most interesting, the wackiest, the craziest, the funniest, the weirdest people I've ever met. I mean, are some of you those people? I don't fascinating. know. They're fascinating. Like, yeah. They're like, are you come, going to the space party tonight? Come talk to me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just think it was a it's a disservice because you're kind of dismissing yeah. all of those people and the amazing things that are being built right now. I'd love to highlight the importance of that too because yeah. it's... It's even, it goes further, I think, than this mission. Uh, this is so essential to adoption, to mm -hmm. be able to understand what were the drivers uh, behind motivating somebody to come into the space and what do they hope for in the future and tell those stories as real people. And I think that we're going to really need this in the next phase as infrastructure is built and, all, and now people will get a chance where they can touch and feel this technology. Um, okay, UX isn't going to be as great to start. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's friction. It can be a little more costly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What will motivate somebody to try? Maybe yeah. they heard a story. Maybe yeah. they heard a story about somebody and they relate and resonate to the intent and the purpose behind that story. So I think what you're doing is so necessary and extraordinary. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that too, because like I'll do a Twitter spaces and like there could be someone with not such a good product, but they just one, as we know, are charming and a great storyteller and like they're also they have a you know a good story about their life to share and you'll right away like maybe want to support that or at least follow what they're doing because you were intrigued by them as a person versus unfortunately you might say like okay this is a great product but like they didn't get me enrolled in what they were doing like I don't know if I care enough which is why like that pitch matters. And like you, even if you have a company like, or an idea, like talking to your friends, like when I tell the story of this and who, who I am and the person behind it, like, do you feel like you're connecting with me? That matters, right? Yeah, and I think there's a lot of work to do. Um, I've just still been digesting this crazy letter that was sent to Congress today by a bunch of people who claim to be, you know, tech, computer, Wait, science what? people. What happened? I missed that. Uh, there, there's this letter to a bunch of Congress people like Chuck Schumer and, and yeah. they're, they're, they're basically um, saying that crypto is, is, is full of the scams and it should be like basically, uh, TLDR is like they kind of want it to be regulated out of existence because they think that it's, um, that the retail people are gonna get hurt. And it's just like, it's so full of just misinformation and just outright willful ignorance that, you know, like that, that comes up quite often. And so that's something that, you know, just happened this week and I'm kind of digesting it for a, a spicy editorial that I'm planning to put out tomorrow. So, you know, you can check to central for it then, but I, it. so I think there, there, there is, yes. yeah, there is, you know, we have work to do to just like, cause there are a lot of people who don't like this whole world and they're threatened yeah. by it. They don't understand it. And I think they like kind of maintain their willful ignorance just so that they can, make these arguments that really don't hold water. I think I mean, it's important to remember too, like a confused mind says no. And so as long as people are confused, they're going to do that. And these can be people that are making really important decisions. Well, I mean, I will say in the space there are, and we've talked about this, like there are bad actors in crypto in a yeah. way that you, you find that across industries, you know, all over the place, but you do have that. Um, they get most of the coverage, honestly, um, which is probably not great. But one of the things that I've, found um, that's been really heartening for me has been talking like, like we, we, I talked backstage about Tara that's I've kind of been like all in just covering that story recently yeah but I talked to a lot of like ex employees who are idealistic and will whether they'll go on the record or not they will talk to me and tell me their stories and tell me what they thought Tara was going to be what it became and they, they want to speak to media is basically what I'm saying. I don't know if you find that if you cover the oil industry or something mm -hmm. like that. Like here, people actually want to get the story out because they care about the bigger picture. And that's mm -hmm. something that I think is lost. Like the reason why you get these stories is because there are so many idealists still. Yeah. And so that says a lot about the community and the culture as well. If anything, if that's an entryway. I guess, uh, what tips would you give to people pitching you? There is so much happening right now, so many companies, which is great. While the economy is you know, where it is, there's still a booming um, industry, as we know for now at least. <laughs> like, we'll see when that, if that lags. Um, but how do you deal with all the pitches and like what you should be covering? How do you deal with the breaking news, but then also making sure you're like having your eyes and ears on upcoming projects and people to cover and everything? I, I think um, for me, it's just the obvious couple things is read the site, know what I'm doing, yeah. you know, actually know what I like to cover because it's what I'm covering. Listen to the podcast. You'll, you'd figure out pretty quickly that I'm interested in telling stories about people. So I'm not, don't pitch me on your protocol. You know, don't pitch me on 
your new index investment, you know, like unless there's somebody behind it who's really interesting and I can use that to get into the story. Um, and yeah, so, so that, I mean, that's, that's always been, and, and get my name right, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, from my perspective, on, on one hand, um, I, I look at this through the technology lens and I think that some people try to brush over the technology for media, which is fine. But in some cases, you know, you'll get pitched a DAO um, and that DAO is just a telegram group um, and they vote um, on something and it, it basically the rest is supposed to figure itself out. So yeah. I, I feel like kind of trying to differentiate your company and what you're actually bringing to the table that couldn't be done in Web2 between that and, you know, a lot of these pitches that I'm sure we all get where people are just, you know, following the culture. And That's just what I was saying before. Words. That's why it's so in important to know how this stuff works. Exactly. Yeah. So that you can like separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably works for them too. I'm sure there's other journalists who don't understand it, who pick up those stories and, for sure. you know, yeah. um, people learn bad lessons. Yeah. Allison? So I read about downstream impact. So what's going to happen? How is this technology going to change us years from now? Yeah. individuals, cultural, social, how we organize, how we collaborate. Like that's the stuff that I find so fascinating, blows my mind. I will never get bored in a decade focused on that. And I think it was really interesting how when you started off, Sherry, you talked about how your focus has been around digital culture. And I think that's also a piece of the story that um, tends to get missed of what is that underlying impact? This mm -hmm. is ultimately about people, how people interface, people interact, how they collaborate. It's about how communities work together. And that's what I'd like to see more, um, more discussion, more stories coming to the surface around. Yeah. We have a, a little few minutes. We're not gonna try to go that much over here, <laughs> steal the stage. But um, I guess where do you see the future of Web3 and media right now? Like moving forward, where do you see it in the next few years going? I saw you were looking at me, so uh, I'll try this. Best it's best a hard, here. no, it's the hard question. Um, CoinDesk just released their desk token for consensus next month, so I'm sure you'll actually see these media organizations trying to integrate with Web3 um, yeah. on one level. You see a lot of DAOs that are coming where people are like pitching stories to the DAOs and there's like this distributed editing thing. So I guess on that level, the media will evolve in terms of how it actually views the industry. I, I, I think you're, I mean, maybe to summarize it, you're gonna see a lot more journalists who actually know how to use Etherscan. Um, and you're gonna see a lot more journalists who are comfortable citing Anons as sources. Like my DMs are just filled with anonymous people with 50,000 Twitter followers who the New York Times would never dare quote as an actual authoritative source. But we understand as people who cover this space that these are influential, knowledgeable people within this domain. So I think that you're gonna see that kind of cultural shift within journalism and the skills develop for this to be covered more like a traditional industry. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with Sam. I think um, <clears throat> there are new funding models that can be applied here. You know, you don't necessarily need to rely on ad revenue anymore. Um, I mean, the traditional publishing industry is not the best industry to be in. No, 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 it's, <laughs> no. it's very hard. Um, yeah. And then uh, again, like to echo Sam, um, <clears throat> I think a reporter should be getting their hands dirty here. They should be like playing with this stuff yeah. and, you know, doing it themselves like you have to like toe the line here though because you don't you know you don't want to become invested in something that becomes a conflict of interest if you're reporting about it but you should know how to use etherscan you should know how to you know kind of look at the co like comments on a smart contract or you should have like used uniswap or w whatever it is cuz it's right there and you can you know yeah. go go into decentraland and play around and like see what it's like and i think that was always very um, you know frowned upon in the traditional media but i think in this space, it, it is important because it gets back to what we've been saying about you, you need to know how this works so that you can, you know, be a better informed reporter. What about you, Allison? What yeah, I take? actually think it's it's imperative. I mean, we all know that you learn so much by getting you getting your hands in this for a bit, and so I think that's going to be really important. And what I'm really interested and excited about is imagine in 2023. Um, we will be able to talk more about actual applications that everyday people can touch and feel, right? It goes beyond infrastructure. And so I'm really excited about when that opens up. And I think that will be a really interesting moment 
um, for the entire space. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see like what are the new media companies to come out of this space yeah. and like to be built on a decentralized platform. Like how do you democratize media in that way? We are, uh, were we talking about, no, I was talking about it um, backstage uh, with someone else, with Tegan, how like what's the future Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. What's the future TikTok? What's the future Discord? And like how can platforms like yours better monetize using these communities? Right, yeah. and this tech, which is like such a way to inspire all of you, a lot of developers and builders. Like, how can you help the media do better, build better, and make money so we can continue doing what we're doing? Also, the role of media is really weird when it comes to crypto. I, I mean, maybe it's like this in other spaces too, but I found it really difficult as a reporter in this space, especially working at a publication like Coindesk that's not as trade publication as certain publications. Like, it still gets picked up on Google by a lot of people, but yeah. it's, you know, it's not the New York Times. Like, people are more familiar with crypto if they're reading Coindesk. So you have to walk this line. So I guess it's difficult for journalists, just like from, I guess, like the art of journalism standpoint, to figure out how you're supposed to write articles even. Like, are you supposed to get into the weeds? Like, are you supposed to actually mm -hmm. show code? Because the story is the code in a lot of cases, and that's not something that you would find if you're covering Facebook or Meta, I guess now, where the user experience is the entire story. True, and, and, and we're wrapping up, but I did have this question, like when news is happening so quickly, like that balance of covering something first, but then really having to do the research to make sure that it's not a scam, that these people are real, like are you finding that to be a challenge in the space as well? Yeah, I mean, the space is so accelerated. That's one of the things is how do you, how can you do that? Um, and I don't necessarily think there is a solve for the constraints of time and space. I don't know how to solve for that. Yeah, we went through this at Bloomberg in 2017 with the ICO craze because there was just projects coming out of the woodwork and, oh, that's a plagiarized white paper and they just raised $50 million in 10 minutes. And yeah. so we just kind of basically stayed away from it all because it, it, to me, it's not a reporter's job to kind of pick and choose or, or to have that ability to kind of go through a white paper and have that technical acumen to really be the one. That, that's where you have to rely on your sources and you have to go out and talk to people you trust and say, hey, have you, what do you think? And then, because it, it, is, it is hard, you know? Yeah. Like you, there has to be a balance because at the end of the day, we're like, we're writers, you know? And we're, we're, we like to talk to people. Um, we're not super in the weeds kind of like, Techies, so. But you could get called out if you're covering something that ends up being not real, even though you were, I mean, you like everyone else was believing it. I don't know, that's hard, yeah. yeah. Also, it's like, it, people are vicious on crypto Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, I, part of it's actually kind of fun, um, but you know, I'll write an article that I don't think is even gonna get picked up about some blockchain that I'd only heard of a couple weeks ago. The article will be correct, but I will have people in my mentions just attacking me. So I think that there is this interesting kind of cultural element as a reporter in this space yeah. where you do have people who are extraordinarily passionate and, you know, tearing apart every <laughs> single word. And you have to make sure that you are, you know, accurate, representing things properly. And also as a reporter, you have to make certain value calls in this space that you probably wouldn't have to in traditional finance because the regulations aren't as clear. I mean, you look at the NFT thing with Coinbase recently, it's like, was that insider trading? Was it not insider trading? There's like- Because you know people yeah. that are gonna be launching things and like, you're like, yeah, I wanna support you. Yeah, it's exactly. really hard to know. So as a yeah. journalist, you have to make that call in your yeah. head on whether this is weird or not, if the government doesn't really know. Either. Yeah, definitely. Well, what a great conversation. Give it up for our panelists today. That was really awesome. Sam Kessler from Coindesk, Nat Lysing, Decentral Media, check it out. And of course, Alison McCauley from Unfinished. Thank you all for being here Thank today. Thank you.